So, hello and welcome. My name is Markus. I'm not Croatian, as you might hear from my English accent. I live in Austria, live and work in Austria. And to this topic is localized reports with Power BI. And unfortunately, there is no solution baked into the product. What I present today is a workaround I came up with after some, some research. So today it's not about do you speak English, but do you speak Croatian? We have to translate things to Croatian, right? So everybody can understand it, even if they don't know any foreign languages. So let me find the other thing here. Where's the pop up? up? Yeah, here we go. So what I actually mean is what I have on this slide deck. So this is a report, a Power BI report, as you can see, published to the service, which is in Klingon. I wanted to make sure that nobody, that's what I hope for, that you don't understand Klingon. Um, when I started with this session, I, I had the first slide in Danish because not so many people speak Danish. I happen to be speak, uh, speak Danish, but in um, yeah, two months ago, I was in, in Denmark presenting right this session. And I thought this is silly to present it like in Danish and then in English because everybody understands Danish and English in Denmark. So I translated everything to Klingon. And actually, there was one person who spoke Klingon, so he could understand what uh, what's on this slide. I can't. I know what this is about, but this should uh, set you in the uh, in this situation that you feel the pain how it is that you can read the numbers. So you see that there's two bars here, one with one uh, two level of two and the other one of level of one. Whatever this means, uh, ob obviously it's about currencies. We see euro here, but many things here are in Klingon, so we're really having troubles in, in getting the idea of this report. That's why it might, might be important for you as well to translate your reports and localize them into different languages. And the idea is uh, that I can just as a report user, so without any knowledge what Power BI is, how this works, I have this radio button here, and I want just to click on English, and then everything is changed to English. So now we see this, this is a report about sales overview. Um, we have like the category name, blue and red and chair and house translated to English. Now we understand this. So we have also the text element. So this is usually hard coded text. So this, this text, let's go back here. This text comes from the data. So we have to translate something which sits within our data. And this is the first challenge we will take on. And the second challenge is then that we also translate hard, usually what, what's hard coded. So usually you have like type in sales overview or something like that. If you want to localize the reports, you also have to find a, a way where you can provide several versions of this text depending on the language. And then a little, little, little trick about here in the pages because the pages cannot be translated. Pages in Power BI are hard coded. So what I really do here is that I do not show the pages. So I just hit them and then I have just buttons there, just naming it pages as a title up there. And this is then buttons which I can also translate between languages. So this is the idea what I came up with. And this is also what a customer asked me about. Can, can we do something like that? And when they did, I did a small research into the interweb and then found out, yes, there's a lot of workarounds I already knew about that there's like only one a solution from Microsoft, which is the metadata translations. But this is not what I really want here. I need more things and then looked up the things. And there's a lot of suggestions out in the web. I will not go into the detail here. I just will provide you with this list which I went through. And all the ideas are really, really lovely. They show, show a really cool feature, at least one, uh, if not more features of Power BI. Some of them I did not know uh, beforehand, but I have my troubles with all those suggestions. So for example, one suggests bookmarks, but this means that we then hide and show different elements like the uh, the text in Klingon and the text in English is both on the report. And then we, knows, we use bookmarks to hide and show the different versions. This works well if it's only two or three languages, which you already uh, also know on yourself, but this does not really scale for every single language. We have to add another element on the report. We have to provide another bookmark and another uh, uh, possibility, another button to change also to this language. So the, I did not li really like that. Uh, the other one is expression based, uh, that we have tax measures. So for example, if the language, the selected value for the language is English, then uh, return sales, in all the other cases, return sales. So this is like uh, the Danish version of sales. Again, this doesn't really scale. Then there's other things where uh, you change the, uh, the columns. So uh, I think this was this one, or was it the other one, the power parameter, where you change um, even the, uh, within power query, you change the content or even the name of the columns. 
But of course, if you change the column names in Power Query via your script, this means that you also break your reports because the reports will then um, um, refer to the column sales amount or to the column whatever sales means in Danish or whatever. And this column is not there anymore because you, you changed the names there. So this also did not really work in scale for me. Then there's one which I really like with the relationship with the, uh, with the language table, but as it was shown in this exercise, this only works with one single dimension table. And it happened to me that my custom has more than one dimension table, and this might also be true for, for you. And then recently, I think uh, Chris Webb blocked about this, so cross join this is Chris Webb's uh, block. He blocked about it, uh, here we see, uh, in February, and I think a couple of months ago, also uh, Ted Pattison, on Power BI Dev Camp also blocked about it and has a video about it even, so you can watch this uh, one hour uh, video. And both use, use the metadata translations and they suggest that you don't have any uh, hard coded uh, titles also, but you just use the default title. And if you change uh, translate the metadata, this also means that your title will change. But again, this did not really help me because the report for my customer was already in place. And in this report, we had customized text there for the titles, for the legend, and so on and so forth. So I had to find a way how I can also translate these things. And also both do not really talk about um, how we can translate the content of the columns. So this is what I came up with. I came up with a solution which has pros and cons, of course, because this is not baked into the product. This means this is a workaround, really plain about that. So really think your your own uh, requirement through and then decide if one of those solutions uh, will help you or my solution might help you. So also my solution has, has a lot, of, uh, not a lot of, but it has some uh, severe uh, backdrafts. So the the single argument for it or the advantage is this was I was striving for, I do everything data-based. So not a database, but based on data. So if there's a new language or if there is different translations or the translation um, changes or new translations are needed within the existing language, no manual change to the model is needed. So I can just refresh it through the data and when they introduce a new Chinese into production, they just add this language file there. I don't have to do anything in Power BI. I don't have to refresh anything. I don't have to deploy anything. It will just work in production. That's what I was striving for. And this was also, <clears throat> what I will show how I did the contour of my solution. So the disadvantage is that every time we have new text elements, like the fixed text for the header or whatever, you usually just type in. Every time you have a text for this, you have to manually refresh Power Query. Maybe this is also uh, possible in, in Tabula Editor. Um, I didn't check out yet, um, but maybe that's not that bad of a, uh, uh, of a disadvantage because if I have a new text element, a new hard-coded text, it is because I have to change or add something in my report. So I have to do anyway something manually during during the, the um, my development process. And I also have to deploy the report afterwards because why, why would I create a new text uh, component, how I call it, like a hard-coded text, uh, when I don't use it in the report. So I have to do any any uh, deployment anyhow, uh, anyway. So this is okay for my, for my use case. The other thing is that the model, as we will see, and also a little bit of DAX, it gets rather complex. So your model gets over complex just to satisfy the need for translations. And very, very, uh, very bad is that if, for example, have uh, some filter in your report and you, for example, uh, select for red because this is like what, what by default people should say, see, and then somebody changes to Klingon. Of course, the color red does not call, is not called red in Klingon. It's something different. And if you change the languages with a, a, a filter selected, this means that the selection stays there. So the report will be empty because it will now combine the filter Klingon and red and do not find any uh, rows there. So it will be empty. This is also an advantage, a disadvantage I could not solve so far. So after you change the language, please also change your uh, filters if the filters are language dependent. What we did with this customer, we also need some pre-selected uh, uh, pre-selections there. Um, with this customer, this happens to be that we use Power BI embedded, and then we use the application where the Power BI report is embedded to decide on if the filter should be red or red in Klingon. 
course they have not not, not clean on there and and trade is not a not a dimension there but i i think you, you get the idea so this this session has two goals yeah. one is i want to show you how i implemented my solution for multi-language reports and even maybe if you decide mm, this is this is too complicated for me or this is not what i'm striving for because i i need it i need a, a, a different solution that's okay but i then hope for that you learn something new about power bi so we will see different different things in power bi so you even if you don't implement multi-language reports i hope that you will learn something new about power bi so this is the two tools so localization what does this mean if uh, if you ask me that is four things we have to think of one is the textual content like the category names red and blue chair and house which we have just seen in the report that's what we have to translate so that's the content of our data the second thing we have to translate or take care of is all the usually hard-coded text so all the titles uh the page names the legend the axis whatever um this also has to be translated. That's the second thing. That's a that's a different challenge than uh, like the, the text, textual content. The third is numerical content. So think of that. Maybe you want to report the reports, uh, the, the numbers, not only in euros, but then in Croatian Corona or in US dollars or whatever. Um, on the first two elements, what we see here, so textual content, this would uh, will be where I will spend most of the time because I think it's the most complicated thing and there's not so much, yeah, there's no blocks or, or, or other things out there. So maybe it's worth to talk about this. If there's spent uh, is time, then we will also spend time on the text elements. And I did not prepare anything for the numerical content. There's a really, really good uh, blog post out there at duxpatterns.com from SQL BI, from Alberto Ferrari and Marco Russo. Sure, you, you heard about those two guys, uh, and they show in this blog post every every possible um, complica uh, complication you might face with uh, numerical content, currency conversions, uh, and that's already solved there, and that's uh, very well um, described. So I use a very simple version of that in my in my demo here. And the other thing is the meta the metadata. So this is only. You only need to translate the metadata if anybody of your uh, of your report users actually connect to the model. That means, for example, if they use Analyze in Excel, then they collect directly to the model. If they use uh, Power BI on their own to connect to the model to build their own reports, then they will see what the, the things are called in your model. And then model metadata meta, meta model metadata meta, meta translation in your model might help. But for most of my users, especially for the customer I implemented the solution, they do not create reports on their own. They just consume the report. So I did not care. We did not implement the model metadata in this. That's, that's the four important things. Of course, the last one is also that we have to translate the, um, the, the, the tools, so the Power BI Desktop and Power BI Service. And this is really easy, uh, comparable, because there's just some options which I describe in some slides, but most probably we will not find time to actually do a demo about that. So textual content, the first thing you have to talk about. So the content of your data, how we can translate it. So red, blue, translate in different languages. So the first thing is that we have to create, or that's what I did here, I created a language dimension. To have this radio button, to have the choice of another language, we have to provide for the end user. So we need first a new line in our language dimension. And then I add rows per language in every dimension. Read this twice as rows per language in every dimension. That means that now the chair, like product number one is the chair, is not only there once in the table, but at least two times. One as a chair, second, whatever chair means in Klingon or Croatian. So this means that the, the product key is not the primary key anymore, only in combination with the language. And this is what introduced some complexity to, to the model, which I uh, talked about. I would recommend that when you add this, that you have also have a sort by column because other, otherwise, by default, Power BI will always sort the columns by name or by number. But maybe as that means when you change the, the translation, the change the language, that it might be that the order of your bars or lines or columns or whatever could change. So I would recommend that you add a sort column, which is the same. Like for red, it's always the same number, no matter which language it is. 
And you could use for that the cognitive services. So for the first example, I will not use cognitive services. I will demonstrate the use of cognitive services when we come to the text components to the second part of this talk. Then we need a bridge table. Why do we need a bridge table? Technically, you could also solve this with a many-to-many -many relationship, but I am like old school. I do data models since many, many years. So I decided also to bring in uh, a bridge table here. I need this bridge table because now we have a many-to-many -many relationship between our facts, like they're referring to product number one, product key number one. And this cannot be found now just one single line in the product table, but it's several lines. They have one product one per language. So we have a many-to-many -many relationship between the dimension and the fact table. And this is not good. I mean, now Power BI can, uh, can this, and if you use a modern version of analysis services tabular or use Asian analysis services, this will work. But I introduce a, a bridge table, so I'm more in control over what's happening there. And then I have the bridge table there, so I make a one-to-many relationship and a one-to-many relationship, no, one-to-many relationship, a one-to-many relationship from the bridge table to the other two tables. And we'll see this in the demo. Yeah, that's also very important that you get these relationships right. And we also have to do this a bidirectional filter there, which it's good that we have it because this is actually a use case for bidirectional filters. And then we could introduce a calculation group. Thanks for Bernard Agulo. He, um, he asked me about that when I presented this, I think a year ago at the past summit. So in the Q&A session, he came up with, why do we use an order of three as you can solve this with a calculation group? So yes, we can also apply or use a calculation group then or have three days in all of our measures. What exactly this means, I think this is much uh, easier to explain uh, in the first demo. Yeah, we felt filters do not work. So go to the first demo. Uh, I have to jump to my virtual machine. Here it is. Yeah, yeah there's an update there. Uh, please do not do an update right now. So this is the, the demo uh, table I'm using here. So there's one fact table where I refer into a dimension one and dimension two. So I was not very creative with the names here. And the amount of one and two is exactly what we have seen in, in the previous slide, right? Uh, a value of two above with a column with two and a column with the value of one. This is what we get from the effect table. I have also a fact ID here. This is not really important. In this in this case, we're only concentrating on those three columns, dimension, IDs, and the amount. If I take a look to the dimension, then we see that I have now a dimension ID 11. So this is one of those referred, right? 11, 12, 21, 22. So dimension one is 11 and 12. And then we take a look on dimension one with 11 and 12 here. 11 and 12 in the English version means house and chair. That's what we ha just have seen in the report. If somebody changed to Klingon, it would be whatever this means. I cannot pronounce it. Yet. And so when I want to localize this to Croatian, of course, as this is the Croatian user group, and am I in trouble here now? Ah, okay. So something, um, for some reason on my virtual machine, the Excel uh, license ran out. So I have to open this in my local machine because here my, um, of course my license works. Let me check this please. So we have the multi-language, I close it here. So sorry for that. I've discovered before the call that the license doesn't really work. So let's open up Excel locally. And the reason why I'm using the virtual machine is because if I run Teams, then my local machine always gets so slow and I wanted to avoid this. So that's the reason why I thought about using a virtual machine. So here we have Excel again. This is the Excel file. Make it big, yes. Close this, make it smaller. No, I don't need this anymore. Let's remove those things. Yeah, upload blocked. This is the next next challenge. Okay. Um, so dimension one, and I just copy this part and move it down here. And I think the Croatian language code is HR, right? Please correct me if this is not right. I don't speak Croatian, so I have my cheat sheet here. So for the house, it should be. I hope I can type this in the right way. Something like that. Okay, this does not really work. This should be like the, the CU. You, you get me? You get my idea? I don't. Isn't it? Yes, that it should I, be one, one symbol. <laughs> but okay. Yeah, there should be one letter, right? And yes. if I, is Do you it want the it other one? to copy paste it from the chat, maybe? Just. Ah, okay. That's a good okay. idea. I use U for the translations. That's very good. 
Thank you, Damian. <laughs> yes, that's what I found over Google Translation. So I found it, I found the right thing, but I could not copy and paste it right. So this was the issue here. And what's happening there? Again, I cannot copy, I can't copy anything here. So Teams, please be nice to me. Copy it, right click maybe, maybe this helps. Right click, copy, and then we paste it here. Now it works. I think it's like Kutcha. I will try not to pronounce it the things because I'm sure that I don't get it really right. And no, it, I, it was really right. Kucha. It was really right. Very good. And then stall it. Ah, there's no there's no uh, apostrophe, so there's like Stolica, not Stolica, but Stolica, maybe maybe something like that. And Stolica. Stolica. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. Very Stolica. Open. Stolica. Stolica. Okay. Yes. Okay. So that's what we get here. So the house and the chair is now translated to Croatian. And the same I have to do for the second dimension. So the other dimension is the colors. So again, copy paste the thing to have something to start with. And of course, uh, you should not use Excel for that. This is just for demonstration purposes. If you have an application for doing that or some other tool or like baked into your application, then please use that. This is just a fallover. Um, and now I think it's, it's really, really bad for me. So red should be, there's not, not so many, like between C, V and E, uh, C, R and V, there's no phone. So Krvena, something like that. Yeah. I think we have Krvena. To... Oh, okay. The, the, the C is really a C in Croatian. Templava, something like that. For actually, <laughs> all the let all, all the words are uh, read it letter by letter. So you actually do not have to change anything. So okay. like it's written, it's pro pronounced, but you must just know the letters in creation. Yeah, the special letters. Yeah, for example. Yeah, cool. So this is like for the dimensions. And then, of course, the most important part, I also have to uh, um, mm, Again, integration. And now we save this. So I save this Excel file. And before I can load it into Power BI, I have to close it. So now we have to wait until my OneDrive synchronized locally. So let's see, this is done. And also my OneDrive synchronized here. Did it? So if this was successful, I should be able to not just refresh my report here. Not more that I have to do. I refresh the report. And if this is successful, it is not because, okay, is it still open somewhere? This means that could not find the path, blah, blah, blah. Very interesting. So let's see. This is the OneDrive and in the OneDrive I have my talks and then I have my data modeling and I have my multi-language and this is what I need as a path. So I give it another chance to refresh. Maybe it was just a hiccup. If this does not work, we open up Power Query and correct the path there. What happens? Because if this, okay, does not work, for some reason the path here on my uh, virtual machine is slightly different, obviously, because I could not, I could not see the problem. So it's like, here's the path. And then I just change everything here. Ah, I know this is not Mere, but it is like uh, uh, Mere and Müller. That's the that's the, that's the that's the reason here. So then we can just refresh all and close and apply, and then it should run. No, it does not because how oh, is this possible to screw it up so many times? Is it that we need another? Backslash there. Let's see. Uh, let's jump to the fact table and then we get this. This is really bad. So, what's the problem here? The path is a folder path. The file path is expect. Ah, oh. and uh, I did all right. The, also, the name here. So, this should be multilanguage.xlsx. So, if I would be able to read their message, it would really, really help, right? So, now we can apply it. And that's the only thing I have to do, so close and apply. Uh, because now I have also Croatian 
to as a selection here. That's the only thing I had to do, add, add my data. That's what I was striving for, right? That only I add something in my data and don't change anything in my report, anything in my model. And then I actually can change to creation. We see then to Srivena and Plava, and I think Plava is even right, but Srivena, we have maybe, we should change this to make it more usable. And so that's the, also one of the uh, funny things with Power BI that it takes the colors, is stick to, to the content. And of course it doesn't understand what it is. So it might be that red appears as blue, but of course we wanna, want to change this here. So this is what we have to do. Of course, the, the text and the page names disappear because we did not provide now text components. But before we jump into that, I want to explain how, how this actually works. So how, how could I make this work? And if you jump over to the model view and take a look on my structure here, then we can see again our fact table, our good old friend the fact table, the dimension table for the first dimension, the dimension table for the second dimension, and then uh, the language, the language table here. And as we can see here, there is a relationship between the dimension table and the fact table, which is a many to many relationship. And this is because I'm referring to one dimension ID, for example, 11, and 11 is then also uh, listed here in the bridge table, but here 11 will show up twice one per language, as you just have seen in the Excel spreadsheet. So to make the filter from the dimension um, um, become a filter of the fact table, I have to make sure that this filter here is in a bidirectional filter. So usually the filter is only, only, only going from the one to the many side, but here we have a bidirectional filter. This allows me that if somebody filters the one of the descriptions like blue or red or chair or uh, house, that this filter actually uh, triples down to the fact table. The same is true for all the dimensions. So far, so good. So we need this, this bridge table. And the bridge table is just a distinct list of my um, dimension ID from the dimension. So it's easy to um, to create either with DAX, Power Query, uh, or if you're using a database behind that, just create another few with distinct values of that. So this should not be the big challenge. The other challenge what we're having here is that between the language table and the dimension table, there are constraints, there are not constraints, there are filter relationships, but as you can see, this filter relationship is not active. And of course I can make it active, but remember, even if it's not active, it actually worked. I could change the language and then I could see the change in the shown numbers or the shown categories. So the problem I'm having, why this is not active, is because if I can make it active, there's no problem at all. But as soon as I start making more than one active, this is not possible. I can only have one relationship between language and one of my dimensional tables active. The other one cannot be active. As you can see, this is an error message because I cannot click on the OK button. And the error message tells me that if I would activate this relationship, this whole model would be ambiguous. That means there's no clear path. There's more than one path because if somebody selects something from the uh, language uh, table, should then because this this the language table filters the dimension table, which filters the bridge table, which filters the fact table, and this is also true for dimension two. The language table is filtering the dimension table, which filters the bridge table, which filters the fact table. So Power BI complains and say, if this would also be active there would be two possible paths between the language table and the fact table. Of course, I know for sure that this is not a problem at all because it's not so really about filtering the fact table, it's just about filtering the dimension tables, but Power BI does not know. And it therefore does not allow me to have two active uh, relationships between the language and the dimensions. And this was the first, uh, um, yeah, bad thing I discovered when I implemented one of the solutions because this was is is providing one of the links. The solution was yeah, you have a language table, filter dimension table, and you're fine. And I thought really really cool, and then I added another dimension, and then I found out oh this is not possible because I don't can't have uh, more than one active relationship between the language table and the fact table, even if I don't really care about the fact table here with this filter. So how can we solve this? Um, Let's make this inactive again, or you could also delete it because not not really needed. So the true story is, if we jump over to to this report, um, and I also will 
color the language right here, the data colors. So this should also be Slovenia. It was right. It should also be red. So what I have here is that I use just a normal measure. I have my fact table here, and then I have this sales simple measure. Make this bigger so it's easier for you to read. Then we see this a really simple measure. So even if you never heard about DAX or have written DAX, I guess you can read this. This is the sum over the fact tables amount column, and then I multiply this with whatever the selected currency currency exchange rate is. So I can then. Uh, change between euros, US dollars, Croatian Corona, whatever. So this is the solution here. And we will not talk, talk about too much about uh, this measure, but this measure is just a single measure showing me the sum of the sales amount for um, for yeah, for whatever I want, wanted to select. And as I, I have selected the language here, but as this language filter is not filtering the, uh, the fact table. Really? really? Yeah. So we have, uh, this is disabled. Yeah? This is an inactive relationship. So there's no relationship between my selection here and the actual numbers here. And therefore, we get this really weird chart, which is really bad because on the one hand, we see all the colors in three languages. So blue in three languages, red in three languages. The same is true for chair and house three times. Maybe we could live with that because then, OK, we have another like the same thing, but in different languages. But what's really, really bad is that also the numbers are wrong because now we get the threefold numbers for chair. We know because we only have two rows in the fact table, right? One number was one, the other one was two. Six and three is, n is just wrong. That's not what we have in the data. And this is just because this filter is not going through. So the language is not filtering. And so I get chair. Uh, the fact table is referring not to chair, but is referring to dimension 11. And dimension 11, there's three times uh, there, one for Croatian, one for English, one for um, Klingon. So this, this is what we are, why we're seeing numbers like that. So how can we solve this? Um, there's one suggestion that next is uh, what I uh, tried was to use, use relationship. So because the relationship is inactive, right? So it could just add here that I want to have this relationship activated to the dimension one. And we should be happy to see now. I've, of course, I have to change them my report here. So instead of the simple one, I show the use relationship one, right? And if we do that, we feel like lucky or happy because now Croatian is selected. We only see things in Croatian or in Klingon or in English. So this works, but unfortunately not for the colors. So I also would have uh, to activate this relationship for my colors, but I can't. So if I try this, I get this error message telling me that I again have an ambiguous path between the language table and the fact table. This is what it's complaining about here. Because use relationship works if I have several relationships between one table and another one. The classic example in NetVenture works is you have your fact table, your sales table, and then you have like the order date and the sales date and the due date. So you have three different uh, relationships to the date uh, table. So you do like a role playing uh, date dimension. And then you have one active maybe and the others are inactive. And then you activate via use relationship one of the other tools. And Power BI or DAX is smart enough then to deactivate the others because two simultaneous relationships will not work because then we would also only see what is ordered and delivered and due on the very same day, which doesn't make sense. So it does a user relationship, activates this one relationship, and the other ones are getting deactivated. Um, so this, this works. But if we have like several relationships, several paths, this does not allow us. So this does not work, unfortunately. So this is not a solution. So this was a second approach after uh, getting annoyed, was annoyed that I could not do it this in the relationship. I tried it with user relationship, which doesn't work either. So then a good friend of mine, Tom Martins, introduced me to this funny uh, filter or no, not filter, this funny function, uh, tree S. So first when, I, uh, uh, first when I saw it, I thought this is Treatas, like a goddess, a Greek goddess, but it's tree S. So we're treating something like as it would be something else. And so what we can do here is that I treat as uh, the language of, of the, uh, the language ID of the first dimension and the language ID of the second dimension. Uh, I set it to the language ID. And what I'm using here is variables. So maybe 
let's step one, uh, go one uh, one step back again and see what we're having here down here. So this is the same, uh, the very same measure we just have seen or expression that we see. You see, it's amount times the selected currency exchange rate. But this is embedded into calculate. And then in calculate, I have several parameters. You might know or hopefully have heard about that. The calculate is a really powerful function despite this simple name because I man calculate of course i want to calculate something why would i even write a duck statement if i don't want to calculate something so i don't really like the name of the function but the function the content or what it can is really 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 powerful so we have one expression and then we can change the filters for the sake of this expression by passing in filter conditions tables expressions something like that and that's what we're returning it so red is a variable and that's what we're returning at the end so what is dimension one and two? And this, here, those variables come into place, which you already discussed. So the tree test now applies the content of the language ID on the language ID of dimension one. And in this variable, I apply the content of the variable language ID on the dimensions two uh, language ID. And how is this variable calculated? It is just a selected value, um, called to selected value, which means it looks up what is currently selected in the table language as the language ID. And as you might see, of course, this is not, we don't directly select the language ID, we select like the names, but if I select one name in the language ID, uh, table, of course, also a whole row is selected. So if there's one single ID left after applying all the filters, it will return the value of this language. For example, English, Croatian, Ratsky, or uh, Klingon. And if nothing is selected. So I made this a radio button, but it could be, I mean, we are, we are preparing a model. We don't know how the reports are, are being created. So if somebody makes this, for example, a, a, a checkboxes or forgets about selecting the filter, then I default to English. So if not, nothing is selected or more than one language is selected, then I show the English version of everything. So I'm not getting all the languages. This is really important as we have seen. This is confusing, not only because the axis is wrong, but also, also the numbers would be wrong. So this is done via 3 ds 3 ds is really cool because with 3 ds as we can see here, if I now change my uh, my report here and introduce the sales instead of the sales uh, relationship, come on, yeah, move it over. Then we see now everything works. Now we can change to Gratian or to Klingon or whatever. So 3 ds is our friend here. Friend here. Be careful with 3 ds because 3 ds is just applying a filter on the table, on several tables, and we can do this without having a relationship in the model. So this might be very uh, tempting to not do anything in the model, just use 3 ds for all your duck statements. But be careful with that because having a filter, con uh, fil filter connection between tables means that Power BI is actually persisting information in your uh, in your model in your data so when you add uh, relationships it means that your power bi file your analysis services tabular model gets bigger because this this serves uh, like as an index and of course an index is a good thing because then things are faster when you use three deaths all those things are ignored i directly apply something and this might end up in a really slow experience for uh, as we're not filtering directly the fact tables, but only the dimension tables, usually this is not a big issue. Um, the biggest dimension we had in the, in the project for the clients I was talking about was 1 million rows. So that means this is sort of big. This is starting to get big, but we didn't have any uh, any issues performance-wise. But keep this in mind, not just use uh, 3ds for all your, your use cases. So what we have seen now is like the backdraft, what we see here that I have now to add those three dashes in every single measure. So this is one of the backdrafts of my solution here, unless you start using calculation groups. So we could add a calculation group. I think do I have one here? I'm not sure. I did not implement this in this example, but in Power BI itself, you cannot create a, a calculation groups. You have to reach out to third party tools, for example, Tabular Editor. Even in version two, which is still for free, you can create calculations groups and maintain calculation groups in your Power BI desktop file. And then you would just have a filter, put a filter on, on which, um, uh, if you want to activate this function or not. But this means then that also your users have to activate the calculation group. If they don't, then they may, might see the wrong, the wrong numbers. So 
using treaters is the safest uh, thing, even if it means that you have to maintain yeah, complex code in your meshes. That's for the second uh, disadvantage, right? I told about the model gets more complicated. And the second thing is that we have to understand and maintain tax statements and the treaters function. Any questions so far? Talking a lot. Seems like it not. Seems like not. So don't be don't be Everything shy. Everything is clear. Okay, everything is clear or nothing is clear. This is also like it's always like a <laughs> all or nothing. Um, yeah, so let's jump back to the slides. Press the slides. Yeah, the slides. So with three days, just to make really sure that you understand, understand this, so this is three s pronounced as three s and we have one expression, and this expression can then be applied to different columns. So I could have written my my statement not with two variables but also only with one variable where i apply three s like the language id column let's jump back here here we could also write uh three days language id dimension two comma dimension two language id so i can maintain this with the one variable but i find it more convenient to have variables for those and then decide in my measure if i really need uh this three days function or not so if this measure is dependent on, on a certain field or not, because this uh, slows down my, my my calculation. So I will I would think over: Do I need a field on dimension one and or two only on one of them, or even none? Because maybe this calculation is not really dependent on languages. And this creates a so-called virtual relationship. So there's no relationship in the model. It's only a, yeah, like it behaves like a relationship, but this relationship is only valid within my tax calculation. So without all the other measures, uh, this relationship is not active. And this means that we have no material in the materialized index, so it might come with the performance penalty. And yeah, tax guide three days will help you about the details. So. It's very important to remember. So three days is like looking at the which or is creating a virtual relationship and your active relationship will not be really envy on you, but you have to pay a price for that. So it would be better to use active relationships. In this case, I could not. That's why I'm reaching out to three days, but just a word of warning, don't default to three days instead of having active relationships in your model. So the second thing with uh, about 50 minutes to go is the text element. So everything which is usually a fixed text, like the titles, buttons, page names, and so on and so forth. And there I also create a text with all the text elements and a display text. So I have one like name, a technical name. So this is like the title or this is sales overview as a technical name. And then I have another column which states what is this in the different languages. So like the sales overview, I have then as a sales overview, and I have sales overview in Klingon, and I have sales overview also in, in Croatian. So one row per language. So only more or less only two columns, one text component, how I can identify the text, text component, the display text, and not two, but three uh, uh, columns, of course, and the language ID. So I can uh, make a difference between those, those texts. And then I pivot this table uh, and I currently do this in Power Query because it's very convenient to pivoting something because in the end, I want to have one column per text element. I want to have a column called Sales Overview with one row per language. So if they then, then, then check, uh, take the Sales, uh, sales Overview uh, column and there's one language filtered, I get exactly one single text for Text Overview or whatever, uh, Sales Overview, whatever the text is, what I need. And then use this dynamic text. So this, the FX buttons, currently they're not all on, on all places. For example, the axis of your charts currently cannot, don't offer dynamic text. So either get rid of them and make a descriptive title, which then does not um, um, make you need uh, the, the axis titles, or put instead like texts, uh, text boxes there with the axis titles. Otherwise, it's not possible currently. And then we I hide the pages and use buttons instead because the page names cannot be translated. So either I have like this page or uh, for this customer, we implemented like a burger menu. So I click there and then something opens up. 
this is done via bookmarks, and then I jump I can jump to to a selected uh, to one of the of the reports. And here I will demonstrate the cognitive services API. But before we do that, um, no, we can do this right now. So uh, the translations API, this is not correct. I think in, in the meantime, it's uh, over 100 languages. And one of them is, is indeed Klingon. So you can use Microsoft Azure Cognitive Services to translate things into Klingon. And I hope I can also translate it to Croatian. I did not check. I'm not coming to remember. So otherwise, you have to help me, um, which is described here. And then, yeah, let's do the second demo for today. Uh, where is the... There? the machine here. So for this, I jump over to Parkway. What already have seen Parkway. So I have this data section. This is more or less only the access. Can you can everybody read this? So this data section, this is the, all the tables uh, from my uh, from my uh, Excel spreadsheet. And I think we all only discussed those. There's also others for certain other use cases. And I have one table for the currency exchange rates. And then I have one path and file because if the path changes, I only have to change it once and not at every single um, every single uh, table. The the part I want to talk about right now is the language uh, section here. So language is this language table. Uh, this is also part of the Excel spreadsheet. But uh, then we talk about the text component. The text component is also a, a, a table within a part um, within Excel. But there I only typed in things in English. I did not provide any translations manually, just to uh, show you how you can do this with, with cognitive services. And when we take a look here, so the uh, most important part is maybe until here. So what we see here, this is what the, what the, the Excel spreadsheet looks like. So I have this language ID, currently this is a text like HR. Um, and then I have this text component column, sales overview, sales details, and then a display text. So this is the technical name. Uh, out of this technical name, I make a column in a table in Power BI, which I then can use to show in a um, well, via the FX button, via, via the dynamic uh, texts. And actually, depending on the language, so if English is selected, it will show sales overview. Or if you select uh, sales details, it will show sales details. Um, in the finished version of this, I also have I um, also have added first that Klingon version, and, I sh and, and now I can see, uh, show you that now I uh, pivoted the thing. So, like the sales overview is not so. There's no text component. There's no display text column. But I have one column per text component, which is sales overview and sales details. So that's the technical names. And down there I have the actual content in English in Klingon. And let's see if this is also possible to do in um, with uh, creation. So I duplicate this, make it an easy example, and change this to HR just for my convenience that I know what this is about. And this is more or less a copy of everything uh, where I filter down everything. Here it is. Uh, filter down everything only to the English text. And then next step, I have this invoked custom function where I call the translate API function, and I pass in the display text, so that's the text I want to translate, and then I have a language I want to translate to, and I hope HR is available. I did not check, so I will find out in a second. And um, if you press OK, if this works, I pressed, so I expand it. And it looks good. So this looks, at least for me, this looks Croatian. I hope this also makes sense for you. So sales overview is like Preklet Brodoje. And Detail, this makes sense. This is details, right? Um, Don't bother with that, <laughs> yeah. but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're not very satisfied. So Brodoje could also be like a product, yeah, whatever, yeah. Uh, okay, so that's what you get from, from this uh, uh, API. How does this API? And then I remove like uh, the translations again, and then I rename the columns, and then I change the data type here. Everything is is now fine, and that's what I add now to my text component. So at the very end, I have this appended text component. Still say the A. This this is wrong. This is of course clean goal. And then I can over home and append queries. I also append another step here, 
and I append my um, basic creation version of the text components. So now we have this finished uh, table, and now in our even in the pivoted version, we have now the creation version or what should be the creation version of those texts as the CSO of UNC is details. So this and if you add another text component, because you don't not only have the sales overview and the sales details, but something like the product list or whatever, then of course you have to come here and refresh this because automatically Power Query will not create those columns. You have to go here and refresh this uh, the steps here. But if you now close and apply, you should now also be able to see if we change the languages between those things that we now see also the buttons here and the um, the sales overview is now this text even if it doesn't really make sense maybe in, in creation so this is how i solved the problem with the hard-coded text any questions here five minutes until the end if you have to talk more there is no need to rush so okay but no questions for now so more or less, this was the most important part I wanted to show because that's the two challenges. I think this is, um, I mean, for the um, for text components, this is rather easy. That's why I start with the other one because here I can have a filter connection directly here. So my text components is the table we just talked about where I did this new roles for creation with the help of cognitive services. And here we can just have a filter constraint here. So when I change the language, of course, only those roles um, are left with the right language, and then I can choose sales amount and so on and so forth. So I can show you here, like this uh, header here um, in the, uh, not the title, but the, where is it? Yeah, here it is. So the sales, it's just a sales overview. So from my sales, uh, from my text component table, I have those three columns, this language ID, which is filtered by the language table, the sales details and the sales overview. And I just drag and drop it here, or for buttons, for example, like here, there's a button, and then there's this possibility for this dynamic text with this FX button. I can choose what I want to show here. And I decided that I show sales details. Don't get confused with the first. This is just because this is a table, and there could theoretically be more than one language, right? If the language is not selected, or if the language filter is wrong, and they can multi select things, then there could be more than one uh, rows left over from the text components. I'm left with the English and the creation text. Um, and therefore, Pabi asked me what to do in this case. Then I will just show the first one. I mean, this doesn't really make sense because we would end up with an alphabetical order. So some of the text will be in creation, others would be in English. But this is the fault, so to say, from the repo creator because they forgot about filtering um, over, over one, one language. That's why I have this, this first here, and also we have seen this here. So I have I have to choose the first or the last one. If everything is fine, it doesn't really matter if you choose the first or the last one. And for the, if you go back to the uh, short, as we have a little bit more time, I also want to show you this uh, um, translate API. So I just called this or executed a function called translate API. Where does this come from? So this is a Power Query function. You can write functions in Power Query to reuse some of your code. Um, and if we take a look on that, so if I just click on there, we can just, we see this is two parameters, one text, one language, and that's it. If I want to see the code, I have to go to the advanced editor. So for a function, we don't see any applied steps, but we have to move to the advanced editor. And don't get afraid here. So this, the whole code here, I, did not write on my own. So I took this and at uh, one point in time I have to write this down. I was remember when I see this that I forgot to mention where I got this from. So this is the docs.microsoft.com uh, pages where the Translate API is, is des described, how you can call Azure Translation, uh, the Azure Cognitive Services from, for example, Power, Power BI with help of this Power Query uh, code. So this is a Power Query function. And the whole code is taken over from there except for I changed, uh, where is it, where is it, where is it? There's some API key, uh, pop, 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 pop. where's the API key? Yeah, the API key translation. So in the original version of this, when I took it from the homepage, it, it said in double quotes, put your API key here. 
the API key, that's your key to cognitive services. So if you want to run this, you have to have an account at Azure and create a cognitive service there. This is really easy because you just say you want cognitive service to, to use and then you just click OK and that's it. It doesn't cost anything, but as soon as you have created this, you get this API key. And this means the API key is needed if I want to call the cognitive service. So the API key should kept secret because if I tell you my API key, you can do translations on my costs. And I would not be a particular fan of that. So that's why I'm using a Power BI, a Power Query, um, Power Query uh, parameter here. So you see the first part of this API key, but you cannot get the full API key. So this helps me once to demonstrate everything without showing my API key and having to change it after every single demo. And the second is that could be that uh, you have more than one um, function. Maybe you also want to like uh, do your um, sentiment analysis or you want to discover what's on a picture. So there's a lot of services. I, I think this is more than 50 services covered within this cognitive services API, which you can call from within Power Query and then we'll return your attributes for that. So translations, uh, uh, yeah. Can't remember this. There's many of those, um, and that's the that's that's the only change I did here. So the rest is then just as I took it from from uh, the description, and more or less what I'm doing here is that you you have to communicate with a web API, um, and this web API the URL is here, and uh, this web API expects that you have all the information for the web API in a JSON format. So what's done here is that like the text encoding so the text that's the first parameter right the text gets wrapped into in, in json attributes and this is then encoded like this body is then encoded into a, a json in a full json and this json content is then used as the content when we're calling the api there's some other things you have to, to provide for example the api key and this is then returning a json document which is then retransferred into normal text um, for Power BI. So this is then just a field which you can, a literal which you can then use to return here. Any questions about this API here? Okay, then we return to the slides. Uh, Cost-wise, maybe we should also talk about this. Cognitive services are uh, cost per call. Um, the last num number I can remember was like for 1,000 calls to the API, you pay about 80 euro cents. So this is affordable. If you just want to play around it, and if you have a, um, what is this, the developer, this, this developer subscription, which I use here. So I, for my demos, I never paid, uh, paid a single cent because this is covered throughout the 100 uh, euros or whatever you have um, in this uh, developer subscription. But keep in mind then when you do a lot of translations that it might cost you something, one thing. And the second thing is, uh, this means every time I do a refresh, I send all over all the text again to the API, even if I already uh, translated it, right? Because this is Power Query. In Power Query, I refresh my list from Excel, for example, and then call the API with all the rules there. So if you have a lot of text, maybe you should consider having something in between like having an application which already provides you with an Excel spreadsheet with all the translated texts, or have a data warehouse in place where during the ETL, when you update uh, the, the data warehouse, that you find out what is new text and only the new texts are sent over to the cognitive services and are translated, then you can save money here. So the rest is much more easy, I would say. So numerical content are converting between uh, uh, currencies. Then you have to create a currency exchange rate tables. What I did here is just a stupid table with the currency and the currency rates. So euro is one and all the others have different numbers. This is good enough for my demonstration. This might be good enough for some of your reports, uh, especially if you have like stable currency rates. It doesn't really matter if you have daily uh, exchange rates or just use the same for the whole year. In other cases, it might be uh, very important that you have one currency rate per month, per day, or you have different options there. And this is what is discussed um, in 
yeah, so conversion with historic rates. And you can implement this in Power Query or in DAX. And for DAX, there's this DAX patterns from Marco Russo and Alberto Ferrari, which is a really good article and it shows all the complexities you might have. So it shows single uh, or simple versions of currency uh, conversions and more complex ones. And I think they covered all of the of the combinations you might face. So there's solutions out there. That's why I didn't discuss this further in this talk. The model metadata, that's uh, what Microsoft tells you. If you ask Microsoft, hey, we need multi-language reports. How can we do that? They will point out to you model metadata. This means that the metadata, like the table names, the column names, the measure names, they can be translated. So what you can do here is that with the help of, for example, again, tabular editor, you can connect to your Power BI file and export a JSON file. And I can show you this JSON file. Or let's first show you the, the, the steps and then show you the JSON file. Then you translate the items within this JSON file. So you give this, you hand over this JSON file to your uh, translator, explain to the translator what he may change, what he should not touch, because if they change something uh, which it should not, that maybe you cannot re import the JSON again. So certain things uh, which are fixed, because that's like the, the technical name. Uh, you should not uh, change the technical name, the reference to the column, but only like what it should look like in German, what it should look like in English, in Klingon, in Croatian, whatever. Yeah, and use Tabula Editor for that. And this works only in Power BI Premium and in Analysis Services. So keep in mind, if you're not having Premium or Analysis Services in place, that this might not be a solution for you anyways. It's not in Power BI Report Server Pro, is not enough. In Power BI Desktop, you will not see, you don't have a change in Power BI Desktop to change languages there. So we'll, you, you cannot test it there. You have to um, deploy it to your premium workspace or to analysis services and then use it there. And let's show you as we have time. Uh, I show you the JSON file here. This is which one? Where is it? For example, this one. And we have this in, uh, which I double clicked it. I don't know what it will open up with let's open it up with notepad where's the notepad no, okay uh not opened up so here's my notepad and if i move notepad to the right screen then we can see here this is the content of this json file for the power bi file we already discussed so the mo there's a model and there's a language table and this table has different columns obviously there's an internal column row number, there's this column language ID, language description, and so on and so forth. We have the fact ID in the fact table. Uh, you should not change anything here. So maybe it's also a good idea to just uh, delete the, that part when you hand this over to the translator, because uh, maybe they will start to also translate the amount. They should not. Otherwise, this cannot be uh, uh, loaded again into Power BI. And about in the second half, so we have scrolled down a lot of, there is this section called cultures. That's the part which is interesting for the translators. So now we have defined the model, and now I can state that I have now a file which translates everything into German, the Austrian version of German. And model is the technical name. Don't change this, but the translated caption, that's what we have to provide. So model in English is the model in German, or language is the Sprache in German. And the language ID, I want to show a Sprache ID or whatever, to my users when they connect directly to the model. And when you have changed this, you can then load it again into Power BI with the help of a uh, tablet editor. And then people, when they connect to the model, they can specify in which language they want to consume the model. Then they can provide, for example, if there's a choice, then DEAT. And if they do that, then they see not model, but model, not language, but Sprache. So that's the, the thing here. Any questions about the model metadata? Obviously, Teams, we need Seems this like not. Seems like not. Very good. And the last but not least is, of course, the tools, so Power BI Desktop and the service. And I can just go through very fast here because this is, yeah, it's just settings. You find the settings in Power BI Desktop. Uh, if you use uh, options, global, regional settings, then you can choose how, in which language Power BI Desktop talks to you. So instead of file, you get then like, that day in German or whatever this means in Croatian, if a Croatian version is available. For the Windows 
a store version, so the, uh, not, the, uh, not, the, not, not the MSI, what you install, or the Excel, what you install, but if you install it over the Windows Store, the Microsoft Store, then it's uh, the Windows settings. It's uh, respecting whatever you have as a region and language in, in your Windows settings. The Power BI service, there's a dedicated settings general language section in the service which you can change. And the report server, again, uses the internet browser local options which you can change in the browser. So there's different options for different things here to make this also work. So limitation and considerations. Uh, what's not possible is to change the separator. So the decimal separator is always taken from the operation system or the browser. There's no way that you can specify this in a certain way which I think is okay, but sometimes it may, might be confusing because my operating system is for in, in English uh, and therefore I always have the dot there and sometimes people get confused with the dot because in Austria usually the dot is the thousand separator. I guess it, it's the same in Croatia, right? That we have a thousand separator, the dot, and there's a decimal separator, the comma. In US American format, it's, it's, it's different and you cannot change this. Just taking from, uh, you can change it when you change the operating system settings or the browser settings. Not everywhere we have this expression-based formatting. So if it's not possible, then you have to just, yeah, uh, avoid the access title, for example, and then put a text box there manually. This is more effort for you to maintain them. Keep this in mind. And three days, you have to have three days in all your measures or you use uh, calculation groups. And pre-selections have like uh, like these uh, side effects. Maybe as we have time, I jump back to the demo and show you that. Um, so in here, so the thing what, what I was talking about is, for example, for the dimension one, for example, I select the uh, Kutcher. So this is like red. And now if I change to English, in English there is no Kutcher. That's why my my report is then empty because this Kutcher still stays there. It doesn't change automatically to the uh, Kutcher is not red. Kutcher was the uh, house. Um, so it's not changing to the house here. Then we see an empty report. So there's a disadvantage of my solution. So if you have selections, done selections, pre-selections in your report, or the user has selected something, and then you change the selection here, then you have to click explicitly on house again to see something again. So when you change the languages, the selection, the, uh, the existing selections of your slices do not change. And this might be also an issue. Also keep this in mind. Yeah, and there's no one-stop shop for all settings. That's why I ask you, if you really need to have uh, multi-language reports, then evaluate all the possible solutions. So evaluate the solutions I just presented. Also take a look at all the solutions I listed in the in one of the first slides and find out w what's the best for you. And yeah, and then find all of them are, are, are workarounds. So implement the one which has the, the least uh, disadvantages. And please, please, please vote for the ideas. So the three similar ideas um, concerning the multi-language support in Power BI. I would be really happy if your Microsoft would introduce a solution where we just, yeah, have a filter there and be possible to select something without having an overcomplicated model, without having those three air statements in, in our measures. That would be really, really cool. Uh, but currently they say there's no need for that. So, um, if you need this, please upload those ideas so we can show there's a need for that. And that's the final slide. Last chance for questions. <laughs>